I have done a couple of videos on AWS in the last few months and a lot of people have been interested into AWS as a technology. When are you launching DevOps learning path? How can I learn AWS? AWS versus this and that and whatever the services. So in this video, I want to take out some time and figure out if at all you should be learning AWS and if yes, then when that time should be. Let's go. If you're new here, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. This is free of cost and helps the channel grow. So before we actually discuss what AWS and how you can learn AWS, let's actually look at what exactly AWS is. So AWS stands for Amazon Web Services and this is like a cloud provider which is by Amazon but this video and this, these concepts pretty much would apply on any other cloud provider as well which is at a scale like Amazon. For example, Google has Google Cloud Provider, Microsoft has Azure, then there are DigitalOcean and Linode and XYZ and tons of more but to be honest there are only these three out there who are full-fledged, fully blown and fully mature platforms where you can host pretty much anything you can imagine. You can code all the infrastructure, they have all the services and so on. Digital, Linode and all the other hosting providers which say that they are cloud providers are not truly cloud providers. Why? Because these cloud providers do not include a lot of necessary services which you might need like SQS for example, Amazon gives you a queuing service, Amazon gives you ability to send emails, Amazon gives you compute. I mean compute is pretty much what you always get. CDNs for example and storage and all that stuff that is usually missing from a lot of these providers. So you're going to focus, you can apply this video pretty much to any of these three, but I'm going to focus on Amazon in this one, that is AWS. All right, so the next thing is that should you learn AWS as a developer? And the short answer to this question is obviously yes, but there is a thing you should be careful about and that is the timing when you should learn this. Now, this is again one man's point of view in this video. So obviously take it with a grain of salt and consider other resources as well of knowledge and experience if you want. But my experience with AWS has been the following. I started my web development journey with front end. I got into back end. I learned about back end and FTP servers and how servers work in general and how to work with Node.js, PHP, these back end technologies. So this is basically my ladder of knowing about servers in general. So one of my first servers which was deployed, which I deployed was obviously PHP and you know the usual stuff where we go to the cPanel and drag and drop certain stuff. Then I came to know about services like which are which are partial backends. I knew about AWS at this, this point also but I did not really had the courage to attempt to you know do something with that. But I knew so about services like Heroku for example which are like cloud services like AWS but they have kind of simpler interfaces. Then I came to know about something like DigitalOcean, which I worked with extensively over the time. And then finally, I decided that no, we need something which is much more comprehensive, much more freedom giving and, you know, has a lot of support for a different services as well. So that is when I decided to move to AWS. Now this journey, which you see, you might be anywhere in this journey, right? If you're obviously, if you're not learning web development, that's a different story. But if you're a web developer, if you're trying to learn this, I would recommend more or less this journey because this makes you appreciate each and every part of the server side programming as well. If you are a front end developer, you absolutely don't need AWS. That's for sure. There are tons of other providers, tons of other websites which can do this in a much better way without the added complexity that AWS introduces. If you're a back end developer, who is a student who is not working in a company who is not working on a serious project which gets hundreds of gigabytes of data transfer per month you still know don't need AWS right the only possible scenario where you need AWS is a your work requires it and b that you are willing to learn AWS right in my case I started AWS because of number two because I wanted to explore something more than DigitalOcean or these simple cloud providers but then eventually it was immensely beneficial because suddenly Codedam required a lot of AWS tech stack as well. So in general you should start with front-end, back-end, move to servers in general, try to understand about them, 
learn a bit about networking stack and DNS and CNAME records and this and that because you're going to be handling a lot of stuff in AWS anyway, but take it a bit slow. Move to Heroku, learn about command line, learn about Linux, learn about how to deploy simple servers on Linux. Go to DigitalOcean, learn about compute part. DigitalOcean would teach you, I mean, even I have a free YouTube course on digital ocean crash course or something but this will teach you a lot more about compute and ssh and how to create droplets and now i think digital ocean also have support for s3 like storage api so that's also a plus so it will teach you about a bunch of services which is solid understanding before you move to aws independently and then also when you're trying to move to aws please 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 make sure that you are not trying to explore everything AWS is a universe. It's basically a data center at your fingertips, a data center which was impossible to have 30 years back. Now you can program pretty much a part of that whole data center all across the world at your fingertips. So don't try to learn everything. Even at Codam, we use a lot of services, but AWS offers 20 times, 100 times more services probably. Stick to a few which are very commonly used. EC2, for example, Elastic Compute, S3, Simple Storage Service, Lambdas, which is serverless compute, SES for sending emails programmatically, very cheap, SQS for maintaining queue structures, reading and writing from them at scale, DynamoDB to store key value pairs and have a single digit millisecond read write operations, ElastiCache, managed service for Redis and Memcache. So learn about these few services only and try to use them in your projects. Don't just go ahead and start learning about how to use, you know, Fargate to create a highly scalable development pipeline or, you know, Lambda pipelines and CI CD and Transcoder with AWS and machine learning and this and you're going to get lost. AWS, like I say, is a universe and it's, it's very easy to get lost and very easy to get overwhelmed with the amount of services which it offers. So what you have to do is you have to prepare in my opinion, in my humble opinion, you have to prepare your way to start using AWS efficiently. Because what's going to happen is that if you just start messing around with the stuff, that is all fun and cool only till the day when you're using this stack on production and something blows, right? Whether that's from AWS side or whether that's from your side, something blows, a region goes down, you lose your EC2 instance for a while, or you know, you don't know about spot instances in AWS, and suddenly your spot instance is terminated by AWS and you don't know what is happening. You know, IAM is also like an important thing, I would say, if you're working, especially if you're working in teams, or you know, you hit your rate limit on emails and you don't know where the error messages are or suddenly your lambdas are not working for some reason, or you're hitting some concurrency limiters for some reason. So if you don't know in depth about what you're using at AWS, you're gonna get lost and it, it, it's gonna be worse when you're doing it for prod environment because there you have to be time sensitive. You have to get the systems up and running again. So it is important that you shift to the service which you know in production right it's fine if you don't if you're not comfortable with easy to practice a lot with droplets and ssh and this and that on a simple provider and then move to aws the amount of flexibility and freedom which you will get with aws is immense but trust me when i say this the amount of headache you're gonna get when you shift to aws is also immense because aws primarily is infrastructure as a service right what infrastructure as a service means is that they give you raw infrastructure to build your code on and obviously there are SaaS products like lambda and scs and this and that but you're gonna see for the most part aws is infrastructure as a service that means you have to bring your own configuration your own code a lot of your stuff if you want any degree of customization and again don't point me out in the comments that aws amplify exists or you know, that DigitalOcean like version of AWS, I forgot the name, which is like kind of like DigitalOcean panel. Uh, but those things exist. But in most of the cases, whenever you're doing anything custom, you would need a lot of services from different stack, right? You're gonna need serverless environment. For example, in case of Next.js, which we use, we use pretty much all of this tech stack over here. So yeah, I mean, you can, you should learn AWS, but like I said, it should be in a gradual progression. 
one day you are learning react and the next day you are going to aws to deploy your react app is a big no so obviously i can rant a lot about aws and when you should use it when you should not use it all day long but i hope this gets the message clear that the answer is yes you should learn aws but you have to determine where you are in your journey right now if you are a front-end developer nope not the time if you are a back-end just starting with node.js or a programming language not the time stick with Vercel or Heroku or something simple, something one like because at this point you want to learn. You don't want to spend your time with infrastructure and writing YAML files and configuring servers all day. Then move to servers in general, which are like maybe like, I don't know, like it's your call. You can skip this step. You can directly move to Linux based servers as well. But this is my journey. So you move to Heroku, Digital Ocean, something like Linode, for example, Vercel is also somewhere here. And then you finally make the switch to AWS in production environments. Obviously, while you are here or while you are here, you can start playing with AWS, but only make your products, projects on production on AWS when you truly understand what you're doing. So, yep, that's pretty much it for this video. And for all the people who have been asking for so long, AWS would be the part of CodeDAM's DevOps learning path, which will be launched next year sometime. Hopefully, once we are done with full stack and decent way into blockchain and Web3 learning path. So there is a DevOps learning path. You can see it says coming soon. AWS, GitHub, GitHub Actions, all this CI stuff, how to work with DevOps, set up DevOps pipelines and work with these services, most popular services would be part of that learning path. So that is all for this one. And if you want to stay updated, make sure you subscribe and obviously hit the like button, comment down what you think. That just helps the algorithm boost up the stuff that's all for this one i'm gonna see you in the next video really soon if you're still watching this video make sure you comment down in the comment section i watched this video till the end also if you're not part of code Dump's discord community you are missing out a lot on events which we organize on a weekly basis to code you already know the drill make sure you like the video subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and thank you so much for watching